Good afternoon and welcome back to the never-ending 1936 Chevy fender repair saga. Now the plan for today was to get this bondoed up mess here taken care of with this patch panel that we built like over a year ago now. But then I started looking at this thing and this fender is just absolutely beat and hammered. So this is what we're going to be fixing today. It doesn't look too bad on camera but this skirted area here has been bashed in, beat out with a pickaxe, and it's all stretched and mangled and ruined. You can catch the light just right, you can see this is just an absolute natted up mess of nonsense. It was bashed in at some point and then somebody tried to bash it out with like a pickaxe or something and just stretched it and made a terrible mess of it. So we're gonna have to do some shrinking, a lot of hammering, and just general mucking about. See here that it's also got an oil can condition. For those of you who don't know or don't care, 1936 was the first year for the trucks to have skirted fenders. And by skirted fenders, I mean this little triangle here. In 1935, the fenders came and they went like this. So this area all here was all open still. And this, in my opinion, is the most difficult part of this entire fender to fix because it's got a really weird shape to it. So it's kind of like straight shot through here and down here, but the actual fender itself is supposed to actually, it's kind of slightly concave here and it just dishes in. So it's, it's really weird. It's like they didn't actually stamp any shape into it. They just kind of left this kind of overhang or whatever and so very, very difficult to get this looking good again, but we're gonna give our best shot here. Just using one of these 3M fiber wheel thingies to strip off the old paint and rust. Viewer was kind enough to send me these in. Uh, you don't have to use these exact brand, uh, you can use just this, whatever. They sell these at the hardware store too, so you can use this as well. But uh, these work pretty good. Last thing you want to do is strip off the paint with a grinder or anything like that. Because you can see all the, the high spots here, this ridge here, all that. You start taking a grinder to that, it's going to be thinning out all those spots. And when, it, when it's as harsh as this, you know, you could even grind a hole right through it. So we don't want to do that. If we start taking metal off now, it's going to be extremely difficult to straighten it back out because the thin spots are going to react differently to the hammering than the thicker spots. And it's just going to be a nightmare. The inside of this, this edge here is all covered in surface rust. So I'm just going to use the same thing to strip off the surface rust off here. So we have a nice smooth surface on the inside to work as well. So we're not trying to force or hammer rust into itself. Whatever we can do to get this as clean as possible before we start hammering is gonna make it easier in the long run. First area I'm gonna attack is this edge here and this body line. I already did previously do some straightening work just so we could get this fender prepped enough to build the patch for it, but it's still pretty, pretty harsh and um, it's a little wobbly here still. Um, there's only so much I can do because there is a a wire edge that's actually rolled into the fender all along here so I don't have full access to get in there so we'll, we will end up probably having to do some lead work on here not in this video but in the future to get this you know dialed in all the way but we can certainly get it a little bit closer
anybody else find themselves yelling at the computer when you watch one of them will it run videos on like a vehicle from the 1920s or 30s they go to like open the hood like super awkwardly and it's all like bent and twisted at weird angles and the wind catches it and you can hear the whole thing bending and twisting it's like dang kids don't know how to open a hood these days i tell you what I like how the will it run thing has become like a parody of itself now you actually have to go out and like buy decent vehicles and dump them in a field and stage the whole thing just to you know make better tv i guess i think i'm going to start doing staged rust and dent repair videos because you know we're running dangerously low on rusty dented garbage to fix so we'll have to fake it up for the camera make things a little more dramatic all right well you probably saw me remove the fender from the truck there and what i done is i just rigged up an apparatus to uh to kind of hold this thing in place while i work on it i might have to add another brace or something but it seems seems fairly sturdy the way it is right now just have it bolted to my bench at the back and this is just going to make things a lot easier i i found out well i was ignoring until now but there's a whole bunch of dents all in here they're very difficult to you know reach without being all awkward like when it's on the truck this is from the hoods somebody slamming the snot out of the hood into the fender years and years of abuse like that and there's just all kinds of Audis here from rocks and stuff kicking up. Needs a lot of work in here and it's just gonna be a lot easier with uh, stuff not in the way. Trying to navigate my way through the maze of suspension and other things, the hood acting as a guillotine while I'm, you know, trying to work around that is just uh, no fun and trying to work in this dark dungeon on the floor. A big part of this, I think, is actually being able to be comfortable while you're working on stuff. Uh, if you're not comfortable, then you just want to rush through it. And if you rush through it, then you make mistakes and the final product uh, doesn't turn out as nice as you'd hope. So yeah. So I think you can see from the footage there probably what's going on, but just in case. Not really a surprise. So the challenge we have here is again that we're working with this weird reverse kind of shape in here and it's very flat through here. So what I don't want to do is end up over developing this because then it's not going to look, it's going to have a weird bulge in it. And we're gonna have to basically reshape half the fender to make it work so at this stage we have the the body line and edge kind of roughed in to where we want it to be and like i can't really go any further with this because it's just going to keep doing this if you look on the inside you can see just how harsh the marks are from where somebody beat this thing out with like a pick or a claw hammer or something 
This is a ridge from where it was kind of buckled or folded. And all these areas are all stretched. And, you know, on a larger crown panel, like the rest of this fender, you know, you could planish and hammer those out and make those go away. But because this area here is so flat and it has a, that weird reverse curve in it, you know, we don't have any choice, but we're gonna have to start shrinking this area. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try dueling shrinking discs. I've got the five inch disc and the nine inch disc. I'm gonna try use this one on the outside. And we're, like, see there's a big lump right here and just, you know, it's not very good, but it won't, the big one won't fit on the inside. So we'll take the five inch one and we'll try to go at the inside with some of the, the indent on the inside here. And between the two, we'll try to get this a little bit closer. And if that doesn't work, I do have another trick up my sleeve for, you know, shrinking down these, these high spots here. But uh, we'll leave that for now. And then we'll still have to do a bunch of hammer and dolly work, but I don't know, we'll give it a try. We, have, we don't have very much time in it right now, so don't have much to lose. Yeah? You tell him. Is that all?
So we still got a ways to go yet, but things are definitely looking pretty optimistic here. Uh, it's starting to tighten up quite well. There's no more oil canniness in it, but it's just a lot of little going back and forth. We don't want to go too far in any one motion because it's going to be very hard to go backwards and, and correct that. So just a little of this, a little of that, a little planishing, a little moving metal around, hammer off dolly and whatever, pushing it the high spots and whatever around, run over with a shrink disc, you know, work it some more and just back and forth, back and forth. It's a really challenging area. I think I already mentioned that, but like I said, it doesn't really show up, but like the fender, it's more or less straight on the wheel arch side, but as it comes up towards the top here, it actually curves in. So it has a weird, a weird thing going on here where it's like a reverse into a straight. And I'm pretty sure um, at the factory when they stamped this, there was never actually really any shape stamped in this area. It was just allowed to do, you know, whatever it was wanted to do, I guess. And then they put the bead in after I believe, and it was just, that was it. Cause I've seen pictures of these trucks like back in the day when they were new and, and even in the black and white, you can tell this area is all choppy and wavy. And when I repaired the, uh, the driver's side fender, there wasn't actually even any damage here, but I still had to go back and do a bunch of planishing, a bunch of hammer and dolly work to get the waves out of it. Cause it was just, it was just a weird thing going on. So we're trying to do that here and as well as work out the damage. Like I think a lot of it has, has gone away now. We got a lot of the nasty wrinkles and stuff out of it, but there's still, you know, just trying to get these shapes blended together. I think I found another, this is probably a dent here that we missed. So we got to get that sorted out and just, uh, yeah, just patience is the key here. There's no secret magical tool that will make this all go away. It's just a lot of patience and a lot of reading the panel a little at a time. Okay, so that's as far as I'm taking it for now. It's not finished, but it's kind of, you know, where we need it to be to continue with the progress on this fender. So, I mean, we got the, the worst of it out anyways, and the shape is back. You know, it's not all barked up as bad as it was. There's still some dibbles and gibbles that we got to get out eventually. But for now, you know, we're not going to finish it right out because, as I said, um, I do have to come in here and do a little bit of lead work in this area just because this was so smashed up and the, that wire in there, it's not allowing me to get this back all the way. So rather than, you know, beat it to death and just end up ending up with a fatigued, overworked edge, we'll just tune this up with a little bit of lead on here. Once uh, we got our patch welded in, which I guess uh, once the patch is welded in, then we'll be basically doing the final finishing on this whole area as one continuous unit, getting it all blended together nicely. So there's no point in finishing this right out until we get this welded in, this all leaded and everything all kind of kind of like that. But uh, definitely, um, you know, it's getting there. I think uh, I think it's a successful repair. Definitely a tricky repair. No more popping in and out or any of that nonsense. So thing with this and I guess any panel, but especially with panels with like weird flat shapes or not a lot of crown in them, you pretty well have to get every single ding out of it to get rid of that oil can. Like even like a little, little spot, little tiny nick or whatever from a pebble hitting it can cause an oil can on a panel like this. 
and you saw just how munched up it was in this area before so you can imagine you know we really had to do a fair amount of mucking about to get it all all happy again but it seems to be happy now so that's good i think we also got the uh the halo out of it kind of where it was all kind of ridged up shrinking disc really helps with this this type of repair i'm finding light is just freaking out in the background i bet you thought we were done fixing dents in this video but nope i'm gonna make you sit through some more dent repair I figure while we're here, we might as well sort out the minefield that's all through here. Just get it all dialed in before we start doing any welding in this area. This thing is just hammered. It's kind of hard to see right now, so I'll try running over with some sandpaper just to show you what's going on. I think we're just going to end up finishing all this out right now, getting it done, and then we can move on to the next step in the next video or another year from now, depending on how things go. Oh, this is definitely a little worse than I remember it being, but uh, there it is. We got uh, all kinds of fun stuff. This thing's, it's been around the block in its day, I think. You know, we got one, two, three, four, and five dents from the hood smashing into it. And we got lots of Audis from rocks and things uh, all through here. Lots of dings and a little crease going through right through here. And yeah, this, this thing is literally beat all of this. All of it, all of it, all of it. The whole fender, junk. If you buy the standards of old 1930s trucks, this is actually a really good fender. A workable fender, a repairable fender. Can't just go to the store and buy one of these and we're not gonna find another better one. because They simply just no longer exist. One year only. Yeah, ain't gonna happen. So we're stuck fixing junk, but this is just to show you, you know, with these, these fenders, there's never just one ding or one crack that has to be fixed. You're gonna be working the whole fender, whether you want to or not. So I uh, just uh, sanded over this with a dual action sander. We kind of got the worst of the, the damage out now. Now uh, I guess we could start mixing up our product, applying that, but uh, there, I don't really have anything else to do this afternoon. So we're gonna waste some more time. So we just got out uh, Mr. File here. Hello, Mr. File. Oh, hello, Kyle. This is a body file, seen this before. And I have this adjustable handle here which I can adjust it so it's actually curved which works really good on these curved panels and that's just going to highlight uh, any remaining problem areas and then we can continue to bump it up and kind of correct that at this point you know before we start on the file we should get this as close as we possibly can that way we're not doing any unnecessary filing and all we're doing with this just kind of scratching up the surface to see where it's at and then we can 
continue to correct it from there on in. All right, well, I was trying a new experiment here to see if a uh, permanent marker would work as a better guide coat so you can actually see on camera what's going on and uh, massive fail. Not only did it make it difficult for you folks to see, but uh, it also makes it difficult for me to see. You know, I guess the problem with permanent marker is that it is permanent, so we can't really see too well of anything. Normally I just use spray paint so you guys can see. Uh, or if I was off camera, I wouldn't use anything. I can usually, you know, pick out just by looking at it. But uh, yeah, uh, fail. But I mean, you can kind of see there's still little low areas like this that, you know, the file isn't touching. So we want to pluck those up. If there's any high spots, which we shouldn't have any now, but if there is, you know, we want to make sure we get those tap down and just uh yeah see there's lots of little little marks which we'll save until the end to get those out i don't waste time on those until we get the larger deviations out so i crisscrossed applesauced it with the file both directions kind of just uh, and the files touching everything but uh, because there was a lot of sharp really sharp dents in this sharp dents and creases you know we're still left with these little spots like this and like that and so what I don't want to do is use the blunt tip on that because then it's just gonna create a, a mountain and we don't want to create mountains we just want to gently raise up these little low areas here so I switched over to the uh, lobotomizer on our bullseye pick I only use this as like for the very final finishing and I try to use it very sparingly I'm only using this to bring the surface up to level I don't want to create a mountain that's the last thing I want to do a mountain or pyramid or whatever you want to call it is uh, if we start doing that and we hit that with a file we're going to start damaging the metal and that's not the the point of all this we're just trying to bring all the metal up to a level plane so it doesn't really take much to get rid of all the little nicks as you just saw um, we do still have some more probably if we go looking for them but I'm not gonna make you uh, watch me chase out little nicks in this panel so we'll get this done quick and then come back when uh, when we're ready for the next step. All right, well, I think that's going to be good enough for our intents and porpoises. Uh, so all that's left now is we'll take our dual activity sander and just uh, sand out these file marks and then we'll be done. Uh, pretty simple, easy repair. Always nice fixing stuff on these big high crown panels. Usually it doesn't take much to get them straight again. That's as far as I'm taking this repair, certainly good enough for the truck it's going on. And uh, for me anyways, this type of repair or this method is actually, you know, faster than it would be for me to apply product or filler on here and block sand it out and whatever. That's not always the case, obviously, but I'm just referring to these high crown panels on these older vehicles. Uh, these are very forgiving, so, you know, even if you don't get them on 100%, it's usually not as noticeable as if you were trying to do like a flat door on something like that or like that. That's going to, you know, be very difficult to use these methods and actually have it look like something when you're done. This was just, you know, lots of practicing over the years and still learning and practicing and trying to always improve this and get more efficient at this. And I think it's also cheaper, as I've mentioned in the past. I think we used a couple pieces of sandpaper and that's about all this cost us. As I've said in the past, the time 
invested in something is kind of irrelevant as long as you're you're learning and and whatever and you're getting things done this actually took less time than i thought but that's not always the case it uh it took less time than uh than it took me to take the fender off the truck and build this apparatus to hold it so that's all right you know this thing was pretty barked up but now it's certainly again good enough for what it's going on old saskatchewan farm truck this repair down here definitely took a lot longer but again, that's okay. We're still not done with it either. We still have the final smoothing and some lead work to do on this. But again, that's fine. Uh, to me, some people always ask, like, why don't you just cut it out and replace it? Well, if it's dented metal and it hasn't been like repaired and ground on and whatever before, then for me, it's always faster to just fix what's there. I wouldn't be a very good body man if I couldn't fix a stupid dent in a fender. So. Uh, that's that's the way I look at that. If this had already been on its like tenth restoration, somebody had ground over it with like sixteen grit, and you know beat on it with an ice pick and everything else, then you know replacement would probably be more practical. But for mostly original steel, you know other than the the hammer marks from some farmer John beating it out or whatever, there really wasn't any reason why this wasn't repairable. So now that we got the damage roughed out, in the next video we'll finally be ready to weld this piece of crap on, which is what we were supposed to do in the first place, but we, you know, got sidetracked as usual. But it'll be nice to get this welded in. I know we're a little sidetracked from what we're actually supposed to be working on. I'm supposed to be getting that car on the road. But, uh, you know, I keep driving into the fender with my Malibu, and a couple times I smoked it pretty hard, so I was like, well, I should probably do something about this, you know, before I completely destroy it and this piece gets lost and whatever. You know, now I have incentive to not drive into it now that I got some time into repairing it. So, yeah, uh, that's what's coming up, I guess. And then maybe this, I don't know. We're just all over the place. Okay, thanks so much for watching. Bye. Bye.